It's time for some Friday Night Lights. Campus Colts on the road against Newton. Colts quarterback Drake McPherson keeps it on the quarterback read. And look at him go out running the defense all the way for the score. Campus, they're able to secure their second win of the season. They return home with the 30-20 victory. Hello and welcome to Friday Football Fever. I am your host, Zach Martin. Somehow, someway, it's already week seven. Just one more week in the regular season after tonight. So buckle up. Might just get a little bit spicy down the stretch, and I definitely mean that. We start back up in Derby. The Panthers taking on May South, both 5-1. and one. Panthers up 7-0. May South quarterback Tate McNew takes it down right on side of the field into the end zone. That would tie up the game at seven. Second quarter, though, Anthers Easton Splain. He's going to shoot this one to Colton Reedy. He gives the Panthers a first and goal. Splain would then punch it in for the touchdown. And Panthers, they go on to get the dub 35 to 27. Mays Eagles also on the road, taking on Hutchinson running back Sam Martin. He's going to run this one in from the 35-yard line, just weaving through the opposition's defense, scoring the Salthawks their first touchdown of the game. Mays quarterback Drew Kemp, he did have a terrible game, but this pass, not his best. Hutchinson defensive back Terrell King, who is a star in his own right, leaps up to intercept it giving the Salthawks a turnover at the 40-yard line. Mays, they put up a good fight, but Hutch, they go on to get the 36-17 victory. Here in Wichita, South playing at Southeast. Jamarion Peters, he's able to cut this one upfield, ends up being a big gain, and a Titans first down South. They were done, though. They're able to get the screen here, and the Red Sea just parts. Ivan Teal able to sprint through. Look at the speed on him. He's able to get the score. And South, they go on to get the road victory. Here in Wichita, Heights on the road at Bishop Carroll. Bishop Carroll starting with the ball first. Second play of the game. Jackson King, one of the best quarterbacks in the state. He's going to run it all the way to the bank. Give the Golden Eagles a 7-0 lead. Middle of the way through the second quarter. Bishop Carroll still up. 7-0. King, this time, he's going to be looking and find his man, Van Hainberg, who's also a heck of a pitcher for Carroll in the springtime. Deep down left sideline, Heights, though, they'd bow up and hold Carroll to just a field goal. But the Golden Eagles, they would come out with the 31-14 win. We did have one Thursday game. It was Wichita Northwest versus North at Riverfront Stadium. Jalen Mason fires one down to Franklin Akui, and he's going to add another touchdown. Second quarter now. Mason, he's up the right side of the field to Sincere Thompson. Next snap, Thompson's going to spin into the end zone. What a star for Northwest. They give Coach Steve Martin his 100th career victory. Shout out to him, 55-13, the final. Okay, it's finally that time. Game of the week, and it's rare to have the same team in back-to-back -back weeks, but when you get one versus two in a matchup, it's hard to say no. And Andale and Cheney, they meet again. Last year, Andale shut them out 32 nothing. Tonight, Cheney will look for some revenge and hopefully some points. We're at Cheney High School this time. It's the Indians versus the Cardinals. Andale was on top in the first half, going into the break 22 to six. However, Cheney came out roaring in the second half. Tied up at 22 after that touchdown there, and then Jackson both, he would get the two-point conversion. Andale, though, were tied at 22, but they would end up taking the lead. Bo Kaiser, wide open, finds the pylon into your living room, and they go up after this two-point conversion. It's 30 to 22 in the fourth quarter, but they are in a game. Cheney, they would come back. Looking over the middle, Josh Burdick, and he's going to find his man, Jackson Voth, to make it 28-30. Can they tie it up? They do. Mass able to get the catch for it and tie it up at 30. Then, in overtime, Jackson Voth, my goodness, young man, he wanted it more than anybody. And Cheney, they're able to give Andale their first loss since the 2018 playoffs. What a night for the Cardinals and the entire Cheney community. Now let's bring in KSN's Julia Labina. She had a front row seat to the action. Julia, how was that atmosphere out there in Cheney? 
Zach, the head coaches always say they have to play a near perfect game to beat Andale. Well, it wasn't perfect, but it was perfect enough. Cheney beats Andale. They end the longest high school winning streak in the nation Let's at 57 go! games. You can see it right there, fans. Absolutely went crazy when Cheney and Jackson both got that overtime touchdown. But man, Cheney came out in that second half a different team. They had the momentum. This was the first time that I saw that Andel could not run the ball, and that was all Cheney defense. They had four shutouts on the season, and it showed tonight. They did not let Andel run the ball really at all tonight. It came down to Sam Harbs passing game. But Cheney, man, I can't say enough about the grit that they showed and the dominance that they showed. And they just never, they never gave up. And it came down to an overtime finish. And of course, the senior leader, Jackson Voth, gets it done. Here he is and coach after the game. I don't know how else to describe it, but amazing. Like, you know, it's just, it, it's something you kind of dream of before and you don't ever know if it's going to happen. But man, that was a dog fight and it just kind of happened that I was the one to score. It really could have been anyone on our team. I just know Coulter had a huge game and Drew had a great, I mean, everyone just played amazing. So I was just lucky that it was me, but it really could have been anyone. I think that's pretty fitting because he's been the one that's wanted to win this game more than anybody else. So, I mean, they all do, but Jack has worked so hard ever since he was a freshman. And uh, I, I don't see anybody else putting so much effort into training. 36 nothing in the final here. Cheney over Andale. Number two gets the best of number one. Fans still enjoying the finish of this one. Just an absolute dominant performance and really just a crazy finish that we will remember for a very, very long time. For a long, one last time here for you, Julie Labina, Case and Sports from Cheney High School. Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. I, my heart still beating after that Cheney upset win, but we had a good matchup across the old cross uh, town rivalry Andover, Andover Central going head to head last year. We saw an overtime thriller that went Andover's way this year. The Titans, well, they're winless. What could they do against their rival Andover Central? They've lost their last three games. They came out for blood against Andover High starting the second half. Andover Central already up 26-0. Camden Longacre loses control of the football right into the hands of Gage Hurley. He's able to take it in for the score right here. Check this one out. Drops back. Jace Jefferson heaves it up to Brant Stupka, who bobbles it but keeps control and walks in for the touchdown. Andover Central wins it 40-7. Over in Goddard, undefeated Eisenhower hosting winless Salina South team. It's a dominant effort right from the jump for Eisenhower. Lucas Dickman makes a couple defenders miss, takes it all the way to the house. Um, guys, they weren't done. It'd be a quick turnover for uh, Salina South. Eisenhower, next possession, Carter Paps. Seen this a time or two, catches it, proceeds to juke and then stiff arm a defender through the earth's crust. Get out of my way, young man. And he takes it all the way. This was the story of this one. Eisenhower, they go on to cruise to the victory. Down to 4A, McPherson on the road at Mulvane. Third quarter, Wildcats at the two-yard line. They go for it. Bad snap, though. That's not where you want to turn the ball over. Bullpups with the short run in for the touchdown. They go up 21 to 10. Now Mulvane, Manny Myers, he's going to try to run it this time. See what he can do here. That defense, it's for real. They're able to get the sack. Fourth quarter, McPherson, 11 yards from the end zone. Owen Fetch, he's able to throw. It up. Oh, I don't know if that was a good decision. Mulvane, they get it. And they're able to still, though, clinch the victory 28 to 10. McPherson gets the win. Quick reminder, you can find highlights, scores, and so much more from games all across the Sunflower State online at KSN.com all season long. More 4A action, the Bueller Crusaders, they're 5-1. and one. It's their best start since 2015 where they won 10 straight games. Tonight, Rose Hill. Well, they were hosting Bueller. Rose Hill's Connor Wallace, he's going to keep it on the read option, takes it around the corner. Look at that effort, able to find the pylon for the touchdown. Rockets have an 18-7 lead. But then Bueller, they would just grind away at that lead. They had a stellar second half, scoring 27 straight points, pretty much all on short touchdown runs, and they run away with this one 34-18. 
Circle Thunderbirds taking on Wellington. Circle leading 14 to 12 at the half. Circle's Justin Andrews breaks off a long run inside the Wellington 20, but the T-Birds drive would end up stalling. Wellington's Dusty Bannister. This time he's gonna fake the toss and opts to take it in himself for the go-ahead touchdown for the Crusaders. And then we're gonna end in Wichita. Trinity hosting Wichita Collegiate. Spartans coming off their first loss. That was at Andale last week. They get started tonight with their defense. Jack Grace with the interception at the 25. He takes it all the other way, cuts it back, ends up going 75 yards for the pick six. Collegiate football, this time at the Trinity Five. Julian Johnson said his name a time or two this year, makes it 14 to zip. Harrison Simons run, he would end up getting in on the action, making it 21 zip, and that is exactly what the final score would be. Garden City, they beat Dodge City 30 to 13. Hayes, they beat Liberal in overtime, 48 to 41. Goddard takes down Salina Central 42-35. Here's some other scores in our area. Valley Center beats Arc City 35-3. Great Bend beats Ulysses 56-16. Wamigo beats Clearwater 45-10. Abilene, they go on to beat Augusta 42-0. Winfield, they beat El Dorado 35-0. Chapman, they beat Heston 30-24. Pratt, they're able to take down Nickerson 52-0. Southeast of Saline, they beat Lions 60 to seven. Ellsworth beats Halstead 21 to zero. Kingman, they're able to get a shutout win against Haven 33 nothing. Garden Plain, they beat Douglas 48 to seven. Be right back after the break. I did want to give you a quick score update to that Wellington Circle game. Wellington was able to get the win 31 to 22. All right, it is time for our play of the week, and we have a special one that we just showed you guys a few minutes ago. Andover Central, they're going to get the ball back. Jace Jefferson heaves it up to Brant Stupka. Look at that concentration. Able to keep control, walks in for the score. One more look. My goodness, almost hits the ground, but able to come down with it. All right, 